Moving into the home stretch on putting together a finished project. Now that we have the sprites moving, shooting, keyboard controlled, AI controlled, multiple rooms that we can go through, lots of options. Now it's time to wrap this up by adding in the game states. So we'll have a title state or game state to win, lose, and to put in audio. The good part is we've already explored and learned how to do this in previous projects. So I am going to make a new tab here to hold some information. And I'll just call this states. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't like having to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because I don't get any type of little mini map on the side to work with here. It's gonna be easier not to do that. So with this, I'm gonna go back into our catcher project that we used previously. And when I look at the catcher project, I will see that I have a couple of different functions that I'll be able to take advantage of, as well as working with what we have in the draw loop to cycle through our game states. So first, I'm going to go and grab our states of title, win, and lose. And I will copy those and then click over into that states file and paste that in. Now we can see that we're getting some errors showing lose music, game music, and reset game are not defined yet. And we know that. That's okay. And if I go back over here, I'll see, yes, there I do have reset game. So I can work with this. So I'll copy that. And I'm going to put that, though, in my main project. So put that right after draw. And we're not using any drops, so we don't need to worry about that. But we will need to reset enemies. So we could just leave this as reference. We don't have active drops. We do have a score we'll be keeping track of. Game state we will assign. And because I'm not running any timers, I will get rid of those. So one thing I can do is go back up to the top and make a string variable. And this will be my game state. And we'll give it a value. And we'll assign it to title in the beginning. Now if I go back into my main game state option here, we will see where we have our game state loop. So I'm going to go copy that, click over into the other, the new project, and I can paste that in. And now we can see that it tells me, wait, there's no game function or method, so we need to define that. Well, because game is now short, I can define game because I've even broken it down into room one and room two where it does those sub-methods. So let's just cut that out of there, paste that in here. All right, we're, we're making progress here. Uh, health will need to be reset. And now we're not using the drops, but we do have enemies. And we can tell enemies to reset. Well, look at that. The enemy doesn't have a reset method here because we've never put one in. So maybe now is the time to do that. So when I reset the enemy, what I want to do with the enemy is make the enemy not dead and define it at a new starting position. So in my enemies here, we'll define what reset means and that means we'll paste that in and dead is equal to false. So we're now alive once more. All right, so now that looks pretty good. But remembering in this game, we don't have just one group of enemies. 
we have two. So as part of my reset, let's do this for enemies two, enemies two. So now we have both enemies being reset. Score is being reset. Score is going to be the number of enemies that I take out, which we didn't quite finish defining that. And we only put it into one of our rooms previously. So let's go figure out where that is. So here now, we do have our health value. We have our gain state. So heck, we can make that active. And it should be in both here. Again, I did mention that this is not the most efficient code between levels. We could probably optimize certain things that are repeating between levels so that we don't have to have it occur in both places, like displaying our health. That could just be part of the game function. We don't need to have that in both, but right now I'm going to leave it because maybe on the screens I need it to be a different color or something. So we could customize that. So we're in one room, it gives me a nice red color, but when we're in the inverted room, room two, maybe I'll just change that color. So let's go into my color selector and grab something that is going to be and of the opposite. So 86, 255, 75. So 86, 255, 75. And instead of filling with white, we'll fill with black for the first rectangle. So that means our health is going to be kind of inverted the same way the background's inverted when we go between the two screens. Just trying to give things a little different appearance. So right now we can lose the game. We don't have any way to win the game yet because we didn't fully define that. So if we add to our score, so if score is equal to, this would be our enemies.length and again the th is the most common typo when typing length as part of that enemies2.length now if you have even more than that if you have three rooms or four rooms as part of what you're doing then you would be adding to that you might even want to then define that as a variable right above that just in case you know to keep it simple so it doesn't become too long but now that we have done that, game state is equal to win. So we're able to transport ourselves to that new game state. And let's see which, that's in room two. So let's go into room one here. And let's see, did I put that in? We did not. So where we destroy the enemies and add our score. So this is under the projectile portion. So projectile, when we destroy the enemy, we add to our score. And then we check if that score is equal to that, then we can indeed win. So we've now taken care of the score. We've put that in. Now we are, if we go back to our states, we'll notice we're getting some errors with the uh, music, which will bring in some music. We'll go get some music assets, load those, and work with it. We're just going to minimize those. Uh, we're no longer using a countdown timer, so we don't need that. Comment out the music there. And again, these backgrounds, instead of just being boring colors and a round button, design something, make it appropriate to your game, put in some decent artwork so that you can make it your own. If you haven't watched it, go watch the Art Matters video, uh, which I put up recently. And okay, so let's jump over, go into this room here. Actually, I want to, let's just die. Hey, look, we died. All right. Now, go over here. 
died. Okay, so now let's try and win. Okay, we won. We can play again. There's two enemies. Notice though the room. We started in room two, so that's telling me as part of my reset, probably want to go through. Let's go find it under reset and reset the room back to the original room. So now when we run it, we get our title scene, our game. All right, so. Oh, I want to just see one more thing. So go here. So we can see, notice how the health does become the invert because this is the mirror world. So we've been able to get the rooms working, states working. That was a pretty painless transition. What we need to do now is to bring in that audio so that we can wrap this project up. So I'm going to recycle the sounds that I used previously on the Catcher project. So I'm going to grab my names that I'm working with here, copy those, along with the comments. And we'll just put that up here at the beginning. So, um, we're just going to Change cut good to just make that our uh, shooting sound. And then we have our different music for each of our different uh, states that our project is going to be in. Now I can go over and grab my sound loading. And there's no point in reinventing the wheel if we have to, so it makes sense to recycle the code and work with it. And just change this to shoot sound. Ditching that one. So now we have our different sounds. If I go into my states, Let's go ahead and modify these, which I realized I could use my two different shooting sounds. If I brought those in, I could make the sound for shooting change when I'm in each of my different rooms. So if we go back into the main project on the previous one, we see that the title music plays at the end of setup. So what we can do at the end of setup in our main project here is title music at play. So we now tell that sound to begin playing. Then when we're in our rooms we can look at when we are shooting. So now the shooting part here of doing the shooting as well as displaying the health. These are both things that really can be put into our game state, which is not in that state. I left it in the main code here. So we could have those part of the game state, and we don't need to repeat them because they're the exact same code. They're not modified from room to room. So we could simplify that. So that would be an optimization. But first, we're going to get this uh, working. So then when we shoot here, shoot sound dot play. And let's move on down. And this is part of why that optimization would be useful. So I don't have to do this twice. And we will do that in a moment. Well, shoot sound dot play. So we tell it to play. Otherwise, we're in pretty good shape. So that now, one thing we will want to notice 
is in our game when we're playing it if we win we tell the game music to stop and the win music to play and if we lose we tell that so let's just go back into our rooms here and verify and we can see that because th that part of the code didn't get copied over we will want to so when we win we will play that code so when we're going to change the game state to win we tell the win music to play oh, we already had game state win oh I missed the line I wanted to copy which is game music stop win music play that's what I was really trying to copy all right, so that's in room two. And now let's go in room one. Repeat that same process. In the lose state, what we can do is now this will become, let's just clean up our indents here a little bit. And we can change this to game music stop and lose music play. And I'll just copy all of that because I know that's what I want to repeat right here on it. So now we have added in these components. And we will get the hang up when we hit play because we have to let the sounds load. And title music. All right. And just thought of it uh, when we go to load these, they're not in my data file. This time I used an assets folder. So we're getting the null error, meaning it can't find that. So let's try again. This time now we get to wait. And because I have multiple sound files that are all loading, this is sometimes a long process to get everything to load. And in any type of production environment, I would be setting it up with a preloader. So I would preload those assets so we wouldn't have that long hang up. Okay, that's good. So. I can win, or I mean lose. Alright, so all of our sounds seem to be working. Everything is loading correctly. Our states are in place. We need better graphics for each of our different game states so that it's not just a generic background with generic text and a generic circle button. But the sounds work. All of these things can now be updated into their finished production art form, and we will have a working live project.